channel sushi dragon masters and today i am doing my february wrap up so in february even though it is the shortest month of the year i read seven books how did that happen i don't know like last year i read more in february than in january too what is up with this i don't know apparently the shortest month of the year encourages me to read more but let's just get into this because i read a seven books, so I might ramble a little bit about all of them. So let's get started. The first book I read in February was The Siren by Kira Cass. This is about a girl who is named Kaylin, and she becomes a siren um, when they encounter sirens while she's on a boat with her family and her whole family dies so then she becomes a siren because she doesn't want to die something like that and she ends up meeting a boy and she can't speak to the boy because if she does he'll go in the ocean and die but she kind of falls in love with the boy and I give this book a 3 out of 5 and I mean it was okay, but just, I really felt like this girl spent one day with this boy and automatically was in love with him, and I usually, when people say things are insta-love, I usually disagree and say, well, you can't, like, because most people qualify that as, like, within a week, but I think one day is a little too short of time. I think she was more in love with the idea of him than him himself. And also, I really would have liked to see from Achilles' point of view, I think that would have really added to the story, because we had to jump a lot of time, and then a bunch happened with Achilles later that he had to explain to her, and I really feel like it would have worked better if we got chapters in his point of view to know what was happening with him, so that that way when he explained to her what happened, he didn't have he wouldn't have had to go into much detail. But ultimately, I did enjoy this, and I think if this ever gets adapted into a movie, it should be a musical, because that would be awesome. The next book I read was a reread for me, and that is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Um, this is about a girl named Anna who goes to a boarding school in Paris, and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 my second time around. The first time around I gave it a 3, so I did enjoy it a little bit more. And I also would recommend for anyone who has read this book to watch the movie It Happened One Night. That is the movie that Anna and her friends go see towards the beginning of this book. Because it kind of made the book make a little more sense to me like why things played out the way they did and why see that movie when if you watch the movie it makes a lot more sense because they're similar in a sense and I re it really made me enjoy this book more the second time. Then I read Unravel Me by Tahara Mafi. This is the second book of the Shadowy Trilogy so I'm not really going to get into what it's about because it's the second book of a series, so I don't want to spoil anyone. Basically, I gave this one a three and a half out of five. I enjoyed it more than the first one, but I still have some problems with it. Like, first of all, the villain in here, or the whatever, I, I'm just going to call him the villain because I can't think of what to call him other than that. He was just... A, most of this relied on his stupidity. Not necessarily that he was stupid, but whatever that, like, he would be like, and I'm gonna kill you, but first, I'm gonna tell you every single part of my plan. And, like, you know, why don't you just kill them? Because you have that opportunity right now, and you're wasting time by telling them your whole plan. And then you know what's going to happen? They're going to use that time to figure out how to escape and then they're going to tell everyone your plan. And it happened more than once. And also, the main character and friends had so 
so many opportunities to kill the villain, and it didn't happen, and I mean, I'm not really for killing people, but when you can do it just to end the thing, and like, yeah, I, I was kind of a little frustrated with that. I also would like to see more of this world, because we only ever get to see the same two places. We are either in, well, what's that place called? Omega Point, or we're in that one sector, and we don't really branch off. So, you don't really get to see much of the world. And also, this love triangle is, like, driving me insane. Because normally, I'm just like, okay, I want you with that person. But then if the author changes the, like changes around, I'll be like, okay, now you be with this person. But now I'm like, you know what, Juliet? You need to just go find someone else that's not one of these dudes. Because... I mean, one of them is kind of creepy from what he says to you, and the other one is slightly creepy from, like, I, I don't know, maybe that's just me, or maybe it's just the fact that I ship her with Kenji so much, that it, and it's not happening, and I know it's not going to happen ever, but in a perfect world, they end up together at some point. Then I read The Man in the Brown Suit by Agatha Christie. I read this for school, and I gave it a 3 out of 5. This? is a murder mystery. That I think that's all I have to say about it. I am just not a big fan of murder mysteries. It's just not really necessarily my thing. That's why I gave it a 3 out of 5 because it wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't my favorite thing either, so it just gets in the middle. And I mean, the one guy, like, I don't even know what his name is anymore. Then I read The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the second book of The Raven Cycle, so I will also not be saying what this book is about, but this one, I didn't really think I was going to enjoy it as much as the first one, because it follows Ronin a lot of the time, and Ronin is like my least favorite, and I did end up enjoying it a lot, and I gave it a 4 out of 5. And the cliffhanger was just, no, we don't do that to people. I mean, I'm, I'm a lot as upset about it because I have the third book and ready to go, but still. Also, The Gray Man, I, I actually ended up sort of liking him by the end, beginning. I was like, what are you doing here, and who are you? You are scaring me, but now I'm a little bit okay with it. Then I read Seriously Hamlet by Courtney Carbone and Shakespeare, because Shakespeare wrote Hamlet, and then I guess the other person formatted it this way or something. But this is basically just Hamlet, but told through text messages and emojis and Facebook posts and Twitter, and it's... The, it's so funny, and I usually have a really hard time reading classics. Their font is so small, and I have, I struggle with font sizes that are small, and I mean, I, I'm not like one of those people who are just like, well, it's so slow, because I like it when things are descriptive. I like knowing getting the details. I mean, I do think there are some books that go a little too much in detail, but normally the descriptions don't bother me. I don't think classics are slow. It's just literally the font size, the writing style is just kind of older, and I just have struggle with it so much lately because I really, really can't read small print. It's a big struggle. So, I really kind of move away from classics even though I'd like to read more but when it came to Shakespeare I had no intention of reading anything by Shakespeare because I just associate him with death and death is not really a happy thing but I just saw this at Barnes and Noble I had to get it because it looked funny and then I have an understanding of the play Hamlet and I got some laughs out of it and 
really, I, I highly recommend this for other people who either have trouble reading classics or didn't really have an interest in Shakespeare, because I really do feel that we should all have an un at least an understanding of the, of his plays, because it's something that gets referenced over and over and over again, and we should really have understandings of those things so we can understand other things. And I think this is a fun way of gaining that understanding, and I mean, maybe it'll encourage more people to read the actual Shakespeare. I mean, it, it, he doesn't use emojis, so I, I, that was like the funniest part of this, and this is like a tragedy, and I, I prefer to think of it as a funny thing rather than a tragic thing, because tragedies are tragic. Then, the last book I read was Cross My Heart and Hope to Spy by Allie Carter. This is the second book of the Gallagher Girls series. It just basically same plot as first one. It follows a girl who goes to a school to learn to be a spy. And this one, I gave it a 4 out of 5. I don't think I liked it as much as the first one, but I still did really like it. And it was enjoyable, and I really want to read the third one now, because things are happening. So that was my wrap-up, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!